Hi, everybody. Joe Chaffee here, Weather in 5, 5 days and 5 minutes on this Sunday, the 10th of December. And we will, of course, be on live tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast as these stormy conditions continue to roll along in the eastern part of the United States. That includes everything from potential for flash flooding to severe weather and even tornadoes. So we'll uh, be doing that again tonight at 7.35 p.m. right here on my YouTube channel. So here's our storm system. Uh, It is really more of a strong cold front that is moving eastward and waves that are moving along it. You can tell that by the fact that when you look at the structure of the cloud cover, you don't see that obvious spin or rotation, at least not yet. Uh, You have a distinct back edge and a distinct forward edge, and then all of this tropical moisture is just surging up the eastern seaboard. Now, there is northern energy here, and if you notice that there is an upper air a disturbance moving through the Dakotas that's swinging southeastward. Eventually, uh, all this that energy and energy that's uh, up around the Great Lakes will get involved to make this thing look like something that has a, a ro- that's part of a rotation. But that's not really going to happen until uh, tomorrow, Monday. So in the meantime, we're dealing with all this moisture that's surging north, and it's creating all sorts of problems uh, with respect to rainfall. Now, this was the radar from earlier today, and I just wanted to give you a perspective here of where it was back around mid-morning. And now here we are at 3 o'clock this afternoon, and we're seeing bands of heavy rain move through New Jersey and over Long Island and into Connecticut. Uh, There are some breaks to the southwest, but that's going to likely start filling in as we move into the evening hours. And then down in North Carolina and Virginia, we have this area here, and we're starting to see some thunderstorms fire up, and those are moving on up to the northeast. Uh, We're also seeing some thunderstorms off the South Carolina coast uh, and into uh, southeastern North Carolina. So that's all going to be part of some heavy thunderstorms that are going to be passing uh, through eastern Virginia and eastern North Carolina. And we also have a squall line down in southern Georgia and across uh, northern Florida out into the Gulf of Mexico. And that, too, is part of all of this uh, that we are dealing with uh, with regards to this particular system. Now, the Storm Prediction Center, as of 3 p.m. Eastern time, actually has two working tornado watches, one in southeastern Virginia and in the eastern half of North Carolina and the other uh, down in northern Florida. Uh, So, uh, you know, you definitely have here the ingredients for uh, severe weather and tornadoes. Last night it was in Kentucky and Tennessee. Uh, There were at least six fatalities from tornadoes in Tennessee. So that was a a rather robust uh, breakout uh, outbreak rather of uh, of severe weather. And you can see on the close up view here uh, in the in the Florida tornado watch what uh, SPC is dealing with. And I don't see if there's a mesoscale discussion on um, the one in southeastern Virginia. Uh, that is the last watch. Actually, they just made that tornado watch up uh, as of 1.30 this afternoon. And that's going to be in effect until 8 o'clock uh, this evening. Rainfall amounts are going to be enough that we're going to have some issues with regards to flooding. I don't think some few people have asked me because there have been a number of Uh, off-the-wall flooding events in the last couple of years uh, in the Northeast and in parts of the Mid-Atlantic states. Uh, This is going to be one of those situations where areas that normally flood in heavy rains will, and maybe even a few places that don't normally uh, have flooding issues might, but I don't think this is going to be some really super crazy flooding event. But still, there will be areas, for example, in southeastern uh, Connecticut and on up into parts of southern Massachusetts that could get every bit of three or four inches of rain. Most of the areas in red from Maine down to coastal New Jersey and then further south and west to southeastern Virginia will see two and a half inches or more. This is actually great for areas from Virginia on south because of the drought situation and another system moving through uh, easing that drought just a little bit more. And we've got uh, rainfall amounts of uh, up to an inch across the Gulf states, uh, an inch to two inches in parts of Florida. And there is moisture back up. This is a seven-day rainfall. So what you're seeing back in Texas and parts of the Gulf states may actually come later this week. And we've got less in the way of precipitation, but still some precipitation on the order of three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half over parts of the Pacific Northwest. Now, it 
with as far as far as snow is concerned, uh, the models yesterday threw a bit of a curveball on a, on a couple of runs, trying to show cold air coming in faster. They've sort of backed away from that uh, d- overnight and today. Uh, so uh, it, it is shaping up that in the area that you see in the paint, in the salmon color and of course in the dark red, that's an 80 to 100 percent probability for at least two inches, and that includes northeastern Pennsylvania on up through the Catskills through much of central New York, and then northeastward uh, on up into northeastern New York, northern half of Vermont, and on up further north into New Hampshire. And if we uh, take it up to four inches, uh, you can see that those heavier four-inch amounts are going to be uh, possible. There's a 50% chance that could be at least four inches in the in the Poconos and also in the Catskills and then points northward up through the Adirondacks and into uh, Vermont and northern New Hampshire and into parts of northwestern Maine. So this will be a snow producer. As far as uh, areas closer to the coast, I suppose it's possible uh, that we could see some wet snow mixing in tomorrow morning as the cold air comes rushing in it's not going to be a problem i mean you really have to get pretty far north and west of the coast uh to be dealing with uh any kind of um of snow and with regards to watches and warnings uh we'll get those uh, up here and you'll notice that in the northeast it's fairly busy flood watches from maine down to delaware and northeastern and to northeastern virginia we have winter weather advisories up for much of uh, northeastern pennsylvania flood watches in southeastern pennsylvania uh winter uh, storm warnings when you get to the northern part of the catskills and points northward into upstate new york all of vermont under a winter storm warning and the northernmost county of New Hampshire. So it, it's a matter of just waiting to get that last wave uh, to develop on the front and move on through. Now, there's a wave tonight in southern New Jersey, so we're going to get another surge of heavy rain moving up the coast. Then that goes up into New England. A new wave forms in that area of severe weather risk in southeastern Virginia and eastern North Carolina. Uh, at uh, 1 a.m., it's sitting in eastern North Carolina. You see the change over to snow in northwestern Virginia, the western Carolina mountains, points northward up into Pennsylvania, central and into northeastern Pennsylvania, and much of upstate New York going uh, into a change over to snow during the overnight. That second wave by tomorrow morning, it's a little faster, which is why we're seeing the models backing away of trying to bring you know, change over to snow down to the coast. Uh, the low is up near Boston tomorrow morning on most of the models, and the rain should be coming to an end sometime between, say, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. from west to east across eastern Pennsylvania to southern New England. And this is at 1 p.m. Everything is pretty much done with. Now, as far as winds are concerned, uh, we will have that tight pressure gradient going into this evening, mainly east of New York City, Long Island, southeastern New England. Uh, some southerly winds that will probably be gusting to 40 or 50 miles an hour, particularly as the wave goes by and then the front passes. For areas inland, I don't think there's going to be a lot of wind until the low is up to the north. And when, once the winds go to northwest during uh, the early morning hours, Monday and beyond, uh, during the day tomorrow, when the, that's when the gradient in inland areas will be tighter. And here I'm thinking that we'll probably see gusts of 30 to maybe, maybe somebody gusts up to 40 miles an hour. It's not a super tight gradient on the backside. There is a gradient, but it's not super tight. And then once we're done with this, uh, it really looks like a fairly calm week. Not much happening. We're sort of on the edge of some colder air, but it's what I've been referring to as dirty cold air. In other words, it's not pure arctic air it's more like canadian air and it's cyclonic air which is not especially cold so it'll be reasonable and i don't see any issues until maybe next weekend this bottle start to focus on whether another storm this one coming out of the gulf of mexico rides northward up the east coast like the gfs has with another big rain, wind and rainstorm for next sunday night or monday or uh, does it wind up being a flatter system where the northern part of the jet stream doesn't really pick it up, so it gets shunted more out to the south and east? And I think that's going to be the conversation that we're going to be having uh, during this week. And, of course, we'll probably talk about this, too, tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show. That is at 7.35 p.m. Eastern Time. So mark it down. 
and um, check the uh, notification on the live stream that you want to be notified so you don't miss it. We'll see you tonight.